Hey everyone and welcome back. Before we begin here today, please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really does help our channel out and it also really does help us reach others in need of assistance with these topics. So the topics or the topic in this video will be statics, looking at components and resultants using the rectangular method to solve. So this will be the 11th part in this series. So what we have going on here is we have a trolley that moves along a horizontal beam is acted upon by two forces as shown of 1600 newtons down into the left from point A and this P force, which is down into the right at angle alpha off the vertical. So this says for part A, knowing that alpha is 25 degrees here, determine the magnitude of this P force so that the resultant force exerted on the trolley is vertical. So that's our first part. So thinking about what's going on here, let's draw our free body diagram. So I'm gonna draw my X and my Y coordinate system here. And I'm going to throw on all my forces, known and unknown here. So what I have is the 1600 newtons over here, down into the left, 15 degrees off the horizontal. And then I have my P force, which don't know what that is. That's what we're looking for. And it's saying that it is 25 degrees off of the vertical direction here. And of course, my origin point will be point A, where all of these forces collide at and interact on. So it is saying that the resultant of the force is totally vertical between these two. So that means that my resultant force will be right here in the vertical direction. And I know that this resultant force has to be going downward, well, because both of the components are also going downward. So if these two components were to combine, well, they wouldn't be going upward because you can't have two downward forces. They combine and then go upward. Doesn't make sense. These both are pulling downward. So the combination of them, the resultant of them also has to be pulling downward. So looking at this, we have two unknowns here. And the first part is asking, what is P? Well, how do we get that? Well, if the resultant is 100% vertical, then the summation of forces in the X direction what do they have to be? They're going to have to be totaled up to be zero because no portion of this resultant can be in the X direction. No component, no portion of the X or the resultant can be in the X direction. The resultant is 100% in the Y. So looking at the 1600 and the P, they each have components in the X and Y direction. So for our 1600, since it's going down into the left, it will have its X component going downward and its Y com or X component to the left. And then its Y component will be going downward. Since P is down and to the right, its component in the X direction will be going to the right and its Y component will be going downward. Well, the resultant is 100% downward in the Y, there is nothing of it in the X. So this portion of the 1600 in the X and this portion of the P in the X direction have to cancel with each other to be zero. So let's go ahead and write out this equation and we'll take everything to the right as positive. So we're gonna have our 1600, which is pointed leftward. So it'd be six minus 1600. And since the angle is off of the X direction here, to get that component into the X, it will be multiplied by cosine of 15 since cosine is adjacent and the X is adjacent to that angle. And then we have P, well, its component is pointed rightward. So it'd be plus P. And to get it into the X, we have to multiply by the sine of 25 degrees because the angle's off of the Y, not off of the X. So the X is opposite that angle and we associate sine with opposite. Well, we don't associate it, it is the opposite angle. And that's all we have in our X direction. And those two will have to cancel to be zero. Well, looking at this equation, P is my only unknown in here. So I can just rearrange for P, which is just 1600 cosines of 15 divided by the sine of 25. And that gives me 3,656.9 newtons in that downward right direction. Well, there's one of my answers. That's part A, done. All right, well, this problem has a second portion. What is the corresponding magnitude of the resultant? Well, we sum forces for the first part. Well, what's our Rn? R is 100% in the y direction. 
So now if we sum forces in the y direction, it should be equal to my resultant force. So we're going to have our component of the 1600 and our component of the P force, which we just found, they're going to combine to make the R value. So let's sum forces in the y direction. We'll take downward as positive since everything's aimed downwards. So we're going to have 1600 newtons. And this time this will be multiplied by the sine of 15 degrees because the angle's off of the x. Y is opposite that angle for the 1600. And then plus my P, which I just found, which was 36.59. Or hang on, I said that wrong in the very beginning here. So it's 36.56.9 newtons in that downward right direction. So it is 36.56.9 newtons. And that will be multiplied by the cosine of 25 degrees because the angle's off of the y. And that would have to be equal to my resultant force, which my resultant force, once you calculate this out, pops up to be 3,728. 0.4 newtons in that downward direction. And there are the two answers I was tasked with finding. <clears throat> so I hope this video was helpful. And if you want to see more problems solved this Friday, please check out the other videos on our channel. Also, if you haven't done so already, please like this video, leave a positive comment below, and subscribe to the channel because all of that does help us. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.